Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of Data Crunch. You must be wondering why am I the one who does the opening today, right? Because today we are going to talk about A, B, C, D again. AI, big data, cloud computing, and D. But this time we are not going to talk about data science only. Today we have our digital marketer, head of digital marketing from Lee, Mr. Ruben here with me. So the D today is going to be changed to digital marketing. <laughs> All right, welcome Ruben. Hello, hello, hello. Mm, okay, keep the questions coming Ruben. Okay, okay. So I've written down some questions and yeah. I'm going to go right into them, okay? Okay. So, uh, first off, first off, to clear up the space, I mean, in between digital marketing and data science, there's a new term that came out recently, I believe, called technical, mar technical marketer. Okay. Okay, what is a technical marketer? Ah, so you, you, got to, you got to educate our audience a little bit today. What is a technical marketer? I hear that many times also. So, so what is so great about technical marketing? All right, so technical marketer or technical marketing would be, it refers to someone with marketing, a marketing skill plus a technical skill. So uh, think of a marketer who knows how to do a bit of coding, who knows how to combine APIs from an app to another app and uh, to do all those kind of things, right? So that makes the marketer very competent in today's technical world. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on a second. I usually always hear people talk about data scientists as the same thing. So mm. data science is someone who is coming from a statistical background, who is a statistician, but happens to know a bit of coding. Right. And also someone who knows how to code, but happens to know a bit of statistics. Right, right. Can I say right. that they are somewhat similar in a sense? Or? Perhaps. Perhaps, perhaps you can say someone similar as that. <laughs> okay, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. So, uh, if, if you're a marketer watching this uh, episode of Data Crunch, you probably watch uh, Ad Men, uh, the movie, yep. right? The, the film drama, drama series. And if you look at those lives of those people in that film, you'll see that uh, a lot of them are from the old days of advertising, the old days of marketing. So, these people, they sit in, in the room. They get briefed, they work on briefs, they, they come out with ideas, creative ideas, but they do not do the technical part of marketing. So, so from my point of view, because uh, we, I, run, I run startups and I mentor startups as well, right? Mm. But I, I'm, I also read up some of the books on uh, advertising per se, not just so much on the right. digital marketing. So maybe explain to our audience a little bit from a technical point of view, what is the relationship between digital marketing and advertising? Mm. Okay, so advertising... Uh, from back those days, yep. it's always about putting out an advertisement, basically putting out a content in front of people. So the, the, the whole goal is to find out where people are looking at. Uh, and those days, it used to be on the radio, it used to be billboards where people are passing by. And you put in your content there, your media there, and educate people about your new product, yep. your new service. And that's what advertising is really about, right? Now, when it comes to today, uh, people are spending time less on the outdoor, I mean, they're still outdoor, but they're spending time, so much time in digital uh, ecosystems like, like Facebook, like on your mobile apps and all that. Yep. And then there comes a need for marketers to actually push in media into those places. And when it comes to those technical places, you need some sort of technical skills to be able to show up things uh, in a seamless manner okay. to be able to analyze, to be able to get reports from those kind of places, those platforms. So those books from, you know, like uh, David Ogilvy or yeah. Claude Hawkins, are they still applicable in today's market? They are very, very applicable, applicable because things have changed, right? But humans, our habits have not changed for the past 2,000, 3,000 centuries yeah. of years, yeah. right? We have not changed. Our, our needs uh, has not changed a single bit. If you study the Maslow hierarchy of yeah. human needs, that has not changed and it's still very applicable. Uh, okay. It's just the, the platforms that people are on. I always believe that human is actually the medium. A lot of people say that Facebook is the medium, TV is mm. the medium. But I think Facebook, TV, uh, ads or billboards, they are, they are the channels, right? But yeah. you, like people, we, we are the medium, okay? They are not <laughs> the medium, but we are the medium. And everything, if things get viral, it's because of us. And then mm. we spread news through, uh, we spread the viral thingy through those channels. Am I right to say so? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. Okay, yeah. so, so since this is data crunch, right? We cannot move away from <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not uh, advertisement uh, kind of topics, but in in the context of digital marketing, yeah. So how do you guys, as a digital marketeer, utilize mm. data? I, I know at the end of the day, like Gary Vee always says, it's all about attentions, mm. attracting people, the, mm. the eyeballs thingy. But how do you attract them? So what what are your your workflow? All right. So a lot of people talk about data driven marketing. Yes. All right. So what we do is we analyze. 
uh, very simple sources to get data. And that very simple source could be the internet, for example, or Facebook, for example. Yeah. So a lot of us marketers would do is to understand our customers by going to Facebook groups yeah. and going through all the comments. But the way we do it is very, very manual, right? Uh, as, at least most of the digital marketers I know are doing it very manually. A lot based on manual work and a lot based on gut feeling. Okay. So I think that there needs to be a new level for marketers to look at uh, ways to automate the process, to do it more efficiently with okay. tools and probably data science. Okay, so I mean, you, when you hear the word, you know, data driven, whatever you put behind, <laughs> you always get me excited. So data driven <laughs> marketing. But at the same time, right, before we go into, you know, I, I put in some of my comments into it. Mm. But before we go into that, but what, what is a lot of people they're trying to do with things like, you know, AI marketing. So that, that always get me wonder because I do AI, okay. but I don't really know how AI is, is applied in marketing. All right, all right. Mm. Okay, so in, in marketing, uh, not to raise any fire alarms out there. <laughs> when it comes to AI, I mean, how would you actually define, in very simple terms, AI? What AI yeah, is? Yeah, I think in the previous episodes we talked about this, right? AI yes. is actually um, applications, artificial intelligence, but we apply machine learning. So, for example, if we look at uh, facial recognition, and if I put the facial recognitions into application, mm. then it become a you know, security system, for example. Or if I teach a machines how to recognize voice, it becomes Siri or Shazam, mm. that's all applications. But in marketing, how does it work? So in marketing, uh, the way AI works is it's more like a marketing um, jargon. Mm -hmm. People try to put the, in the word AI to re over market their products, their ad tech products, okay. right? Uh, but the way it works and the way it would work in marketing is uh, people are all very obsessed about predictive marketing. So if you were to actually come out with a marketing campaign, all right, uh, if you have that power or the ability to predict how this campaign or how this ad creative would work out there yeah. before you actually run it, that's very powerful, oh, all right? Okay. So that's what they call AI marketing. Okay. But I think it's still in its infancy. A lot of them are not really doing it at all yet. Uh, they're still very, very early in the game. Okay. Right? So would you, uh, would, would, would I be right to say that at the end of the day, the digital marketing or even marketing in a whole, in the general, right, is more about content. It's about yes. the quality of the content. Mm. Content is king. This is still valid, right? Mm. Okay, mm. now we're going to enter a short break. <laughs> After the break, we're going to talk about in the technical terms or in the data science sense that how are you going to get content using some innovative methods? See you later. Welcome back to Data Crunch. Now, before the, the short break, we were actually talking about content, right? Mm. So Ruben, um, I want to hear a bit from you is, uh, how do you guys actually generate content now? Okay, so when it comes to digital marketing, all right, what we humans or our potential customers are doing online is they're consuming content. Yes. Think about the time you go on Facebook, you're consuming content, yeah. but Facebook is like a pasamalam. Okay. Right, you go there without a sense of direction, you just scroll, 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 and see whatever content that comes your way and whatever that interests you. Right? So you see pictures of your friends, you see pictures of cats, you see funny memes and all that kind of thing. Yep. And probably you stumble upon a content that you might like. Probably something on a subject you like. Maybe it, if you like clothes and you see five tips of wearing a cloth or something like that, mm. you'll probably be interested in that. And that's a content. So in digital marketing, we create content, we marketers create content to attract uh, people yeah. and basically to in a way soft sell them okay all right so we don't go and say hey this is our e-commerce store this is our clothes buy now yeah yeah but no we more give them hard content. selling we yeah. give them content we slowly you know give them a little bit of it and then we sell okay so that's that's content away but when it comes to creating content right a lot of us marketers what we do today is we just look at what is there and 
make a guess and come up with something. So uh, the keyword that I pick up here is more about guessing and also yeah. if you are more experienced or you are in the industry or in the, in the field or in a better way, in a niche long enough, mm. then you sort of develop some senses or gut yeah, feeling yeah, yeah. because of your, your experience, right. right? But me as a technical guy, as a data scientist, I, I don't quite buy into that uh, because I always believe that there's, there's a scientific way mm. for you to find out more about those um, those community, let's, let's call it community, right? right? Let's say I'm writing into food, all right? Okay, we're, we're entering food and there's a, this cold start problem in academic research is that when I only have uh, five likes or 10 likes on my mm. Facebook page, I think everybody starts <laughs> there, right? So how are you going to gather content based on that? Or, or is, it, is it true that if I say that you still based on your guess or gut feeling to start with? All right, so a lot of people, again, they go through guess yeah, or gut yeah. feeling. Um, some of us use tools, yep. things yep. like, okay, before that, if you have five or 10 likes on your Facebook, what a lot of people do is they buy likes. Yeah. Okay? But anyway. Don't do that, right? Don't do that. Don't, don't do, do that. that. Yeah, don't yeah. Do that. Yeah. If you're doing that for a, a short little stunt, maybe okay, but I would advise you not to do that. Anyway, yeah. coming back to the content part, all right? So what a lot of people do is uh, they start using things like Basumo. Okay. All right, it's a, it's a software. We've put down the link there so you can check it out. It's a software that uh, allows you to find the most popular content on the internet based on the likes, shares, and comments that they get on a particular piece of content. Mm. It could be an article, it could be a YouTube video, or any content that's online, right? So basically, it generates, uh, it, it generates a list of content that has most likes, shares, and comments. Okay. And from there, you basically guess, oh, because this piece of content is uh, famous, popular, that must be something people like to read. But wouldn't it be something like, yeah lah, this thing is already popular and then if you if you try to write something already that is popular but say in technical terms that like you're SEO or what, mm. you're still competing mm -hmm. with somebody. So let's say, I mean, a lot of Malaysians when they buy things, right, they, they either go to group and ask things and then they request a lot of PM, PM this mm. and PM, <laughs> PM that. Or uh, they have WhatsApp or WeChat group. Right. So from a technical perspective, what if I'm able to come up with a tool? Okay, I'm not selling our Python power up course, but <laughs> if you're interested, do join. Okay, yeah, do join, do join the course, all right? Okay, I'm not, not trying to sell the course, but in Python, uh, in data science, we have these skills called web scraping. So mm. if I'm able to go into the community and then I look at you, I said, Ruben, look, this is, let's say, uh, where KL people hang out and then they talk mm. about food. Mm. And uh, these are the, the message, okay? These are the threats that a lot of people comment and they are very active in that. So would that help you? That is actually a great tool. I mean, there have been a few web scraping tools that we have gone through in the, in the past, mm. but every now and then, those tools, they work only for a few weeks or a month before going out of phase. Yep. And there's no real one way to actually scrape out those information. But if we can do that, that's amazing because but we understand. We have a couple customer. of students, they are actually digital marketer. They came to our, our Data Science 360 program, right? And they actually told us that um, those tools get outdated mm. uh, whenever, whenever Facebook changed the algorithm and then they, it's gone, they, they're gone la, or right. you have to pay pay more money and they're not not that cheap right mm. or, or rather the cheap one doesn't really work that yeah well. doesn't really work that well gives you all sort of rubbish kind of uh, scraping methods and all that you know? okay okay so yeah. so actually web scraping is one of the ways that they can help to increase your engagement in understanding the customers understanding yes. the customer understanding mm. the community so uh, is it right if I say that that also helped you not just to understand what they are they are talking about and also help you in terms of participate in the discussion to set up you as a uh, your credibility in the community? Definitely. I mean, we can do it manually by going into all those comments and all that. Yeah. But at a large scale, if we have a tool like that, a web scripting tool, that is a godsend. Yeah, because in, in corporates, right, uh, I handle a couple of corporate projects when it comes to social media monitoring mm. per se. We also do that a lot. So it, it does not only help you to look, uh, your, your favorite terms, like look inbound, <laughs> right? Digital yes. things like I say. It not only helps you to look inbound, but also help you to look outward is that it helps you to look at uh, competitive intelligence. So mm. for example, if you are, you are selling handphones, right? Your iPhone, your Apple, you can look at how Huawei, Samsung mm. or, or other Android phones are doing and whether people are interested about their form factor, their right. colors right. or their camera resolutions or the, the abilities of different features, for mm. example. So mm -hmm. I think that that would be one of the good ways to help our, our audience, right? If they are... Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean, this will give you a, a tip on uh, using an application for that. If you're looking into the competitive uh, intelligence and yeah. looking at your competitors, you can use a tool called SimilarWeb. I think we've used that many yeah. times before. Yeah. Now, SimilarWeb, what it does is it actually analyzes the websites of your competitors 
see where the traffic comes from, um, how they are, are they advertising, what kind of keywords they use, things like that. So that's a way of, you know, do, to do competitive intelligence. Okay, now, you, you are watching Data Crunch now, okay, in <laughs> case you don't know, like, yeah. but Data Crunch, we have to talk about data. So when it comes to digital marketing uh, or marketing per se, you have a lot of data that's coming in, you have CPC, CAC, mm. LTV, mm. And, and the, the things that goes on, right? If, if we just talk about Google Analytics also, I look at it also like, uh, you got bounce rate, you got the time, usually uh, the session, how many minutes they spend on your website, mm. how many pages the, or, or the user flow. And this is just GA, right? Google Analytics yeah. as one, one of the, and you have mobile phones, you have website, and you have all sorts of different devices. So how do you guys actually consolidating those data? I'm very concerned about that because <laughs> whenever I ask, mm. they, they just tell me Excel, uh, Excel <laughs> is the tool that you use. But how do you actually uh, collate this information into, into a place before you can do those analysis right. and generate report? Right. So, Marketers and advertisers, people who work in the industry, they love jargons, right? I, either they, either they, they make them appear smarter or they exist to confuse their customers, yeah. right? If they cannot con <laughs> convince you, then they confuse, they confuse you. you. Yeah, yeah, you know the saying that goes. Yeah. So what happens is, I'm not saying a lot of us do not do it, but a lot of marketers, they, they don't actually consolidate all their data into a single source. So if I, I mean, given any agency out there, uh, not all of them, again, but Plenty of them, right? Okay. They will actually get they will run campaigns on Facebook, Google, all those and whatnot, right? And when it comes when it comes to consolidating them into one single source, they will actually report, oh, platform Facebook. This is what we get from platform Facebook. Platform Google, this is what we get from Google. Okay. Right? So there's no one way to look at the, the whole campaign from a larger scale, like a larger picture. So you you don't really have a bird's eye view yes, or, or a bird's unified view. view of that. So uh it, in my in data science context, of course, I'm going to recommend you. Right, uh, what if we can help you to build a dashboard, right? An operation dashboard, or even a tactical or strategy strategic dashboard. Would that help you a lot? Then, as a then, then it will help a lot because we would know what what is going on in the whole overall campaign. There's so many moving parts, right? Yeah. And, and we want to know what's going on, what's working, what's not working, uh, why is it working, and where should we go next? Okay. Right. So so that will actually help us in the, in that kind of sense. Okay. Right. okay, now guys, you must have heard a lot of things and I believe that Ruben has dropped a lot of nuggets here so that I hope that you pick up most of them. Now before we end this episode, all right, Ruben, do you have any advice for those uh, digital marketers out there who wants to pick up data science? Because you, you have been with, with me, with Lee yeah. for, for long enough <laughs> that you know the, the power or the, at least we are all moving into a data, data right, era. Right, right. So from your perspective, any advice for our audience? So there are a lot types of digital marketers or marketers out there, right? Some, some of them are more creative and some of them are more technical in a way, mm -hmm. right? But if you can marry these two up together, right? And marry up like digital marketing plus data science together, you'll be a super powerful marketer, I believe, mm. right? So again, uh, I think there's so many approaches out there, right? So one way to differentiate yourself from the many marketers out there, you think you take a stone and throw today, right? In a large crowd, you probably hit a Facebook, Facebook marketer. I don't know, Jay. <laughs> one, one of the key reasons that I'm asking this is because every time when I run my ads, right, I have to fight against a lot of people who teach people how to buy Facebook ads. Right, right, right. Yeah, so right. so for, for marketers out there, one way to differentiate yourself and to make yourself, to give yourself a power up, yeah. right, is to combine the skills of data science plus the digital marketing together. Mm. That will give you the edge in the industry. I believe that's a good advice for most marketers out there. All right, all right. Thank you, Ruben. And thank you for watching the, uh, the Data Crunch episode. Now feel free to follow us on our Facebook and then subscribe to our YouTube. And if you have any questions, any comments, leave it down here and then we'll reply to you. All right, thank you. I'll see you in the next episode. See you.